everyone, I am your first reporter, Lovelia Calixto, and now I am going to discuss the indigenous materials in the Philippines. Indigenous materials in the Philippines. Indigenous materials are materials that are naturally and locally found in a specific place such as timbers, canes, grass, palms, and rattan. Other indigenous raw materials in the country that are commonly known and used creatively in crafts and decoration are copies, pearls, corals, and seashells. Being an archipelago naturally abundant in beaches and marine resources. The native Filipino products like in wooden or rattan furniture and handicrafts, woven abaca or pine cloth, and other handmade or carved toy or trinket one usually finds in rural areas was made from indigenous raw materials. Some artists in the Philippines like Elito Serka, a father of indigenism art, Mark Lawrence Libunao, garlic painter, Ramon Lopez and the Ras painter, Jordan Mang Osan, a solar artist, and other indigenism artists are promoting the use of indigenous raw materials for their masterpiece. Filipino architecture established the importance of using indigenous materials sawali it is still naturally cooler than condos and houses. So some of the examples of local materials are handmade just like sandals, bags, baskets, o katongkalo nga sa bukid, good siya, nga abaka tato siya or something. And ginag Ginagamit po ang mga local materials sa architecture ka ng mga bubong or bubong go na to nga murag or atop na to ka na or something nga makita go na to siya sa dagkadaghanan sa bukid ana god bisag diri good sa Jensen dagan mo makita ka ng mga kahoy lang god nga balay asya local materials ang tawagan na siya niya kay mas maayo siya sa tong nature or environment kay dili siya makapulyot sa ato ang nature o daghan po gamit ang mga kahoy like ang kahoy niya himuuni mo siya haligi or ang tapos tong mga dahon-dahon niya pwede ni mo siya mahimong ato pag katong mga pisgod nga dili na lang gud niya dinagod magamit pwede pud ni mo siya mapanggatong so that's why kanang mas maayo nga gamiton yun ang mga local materials kay mas dili siya bugat sa ato ang environment Importance of indigenous materials Using locally produced materials has multiple advantages. It reduces the fossil fuels and associated pollutants including greenhouse gas emissions required for shipping. It supports local businesses and feeds money into the regional economy. Why is it important to develop local materials? The use of local materials and products is important to create a sense of belonging an emotional relationship between our people and our spaces. This level of engage engagement, which makes people feel comfortable at work, having an impact on human well-being. So, the government must also consider and support our local materials for construction so as to address issues concerning the environment and economy. The origin destination and use of materials themselves is probably the first step not only on the creation of stabilized local economies but also in the reduction of much of the environment impact. That's all for my report. Thank you. Good afternoon everyone. I am Alo Grace M. Codorna, the second reporter. I am going to discuss to you the handicraft materials. In order to create new handicraft product which can be sold locally or exported abroad, different raw materials which are available in the market are needed. Handy makers fashion them into baskets, bags, accessories, cabinets, lampshade, wall decor, bamboo sofa set, cabinets, clothes, and others. Here are the commonly needed in making handicrafts. First, abaca. This is one of the most popular raw materials that can be found in the Philippines, also known as Manila hemp. 
Abaca fibers are used for making virus products like bags and slippers. Second is buri. It is a palm form which three kinds of fibers, namely buri, raffin, and bontal are obtained. The buri palm has large fan-shaped leaves with stout petulis ranging from 2 to 3 meter in length. As you can see, this is the example of buri products. Now, let's proceed. Third is leather. It is a material created through the tanning of hides, skins, and kips of animals. Hides are skins from large animals like horses and carabaos. Skins came from such animals like alligators and goats. Kips are obtained from undersized animals like lizard. The tanning process converts the portisible skin into adorable, long-lasting, and versatile natural materials from various uses. This is the example of leather product. Now let's proceed. The word is bamboo. This is a kind of grass that's used in making most of Filipino-made furniture. Unlike rattan, bamboo plants are more flexible and stronger. However, when it's come to the weight, there's are definitely heavier than rattan. As for the price, bamboo are very much affordable on some provinces. Every 5 meters of bamboo can be bought for only 150 to 200 pesos. This is the example of bamboo product. Now let's proceed. The pith is rattan. These materials is often used making furniture. In a typical Filipino house, you will see a set of furniture made with rattan. A bamboo-like wood which is more hollow and solid. This grows into a hundreds of meters long. This is the example of rattan product. Now let's proceed. The sixth is coconut shells. If there's one kind of a tree that you can surely say abundant in this country, it's the coconut tree. Aside from the tasty coconut fruit and the strong planks of coconut numbers that this product produced, craftsmen also find use in coconut shells. Various products are being made out of this material such as coin banks, flower vases, and lamp shades. The last one is fiber. Although these materials can be produced a variety of plants, these are chosen plants that are known for producing a good quality of fiber. Fiber are used to creating products like carpet, seat pads, barong Tagalog, and matrices. Because of these raw materials, the country known for its virus Filipino-made products, mind you, these creations are being exported outside the country. That only means that Filipino products can be compared or labeled with the products produced outside the country. Even more, you can clearly say that the craftsmen here are really skilled and up to par. Now, the next report will be Anthony. Good afternoon everyone. I am Anthony Candole. I am the third reporter. So, my topic was all about the advantages of using indigenous materials. For as of today, indigenous materials are fairly considered more for their artistic purpose, with greater respect for the potential functionality, so than for conventional urban function, uh, urban development. So, we have grown used to buildings enclosed by uh, uh, concrete and glasses so that we get fascinated when we entered uh, any place enclosed by uh, bamboo poles and coconut timbers. So, these are the advantages in using uh, indigenous materials. So, first, we have uh, is within the reach of the masses. So, second, the coast do not go fast as to uh, energy, transportation, and skilled uh, labor too. And third, uh, since it is uh, locally produced, uh, cost is much less than uh, imported uh, building materials because of less transportation cost. And fourth, most indigenous buildings, materials, and technologies may possess 
uh, some or all of the following characteristic. So, uses of uh, renewable sources. Uses materials that uh, causes uh, minimal contribution to pollution. Uh, permits recycling of materials and does not lead to large-scale uh, exploitation of natural resources because of decentralized mode of application. So, uh, at the same time, we have uh, the three benefits of using uh, indigenous materials. So, first, we have the planet. So, why is planet? So, buying from local vendors and manufacturers cuts down on fuel emission because it takes less fuel to transport goods than it would to transport uh, them across the country or across uh, continents. So, purchasing produce locally encourage uh, biodiversity. Then, second, it is the people. So, if you support your local economy and foster